Anyway, carry on. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, so um, today, everybody's pretty much obsessed with soaps, but I think they've pretty much got all the same plots. Just in Hollyoaks, the same person's been murdered at least three times, and they're just not very creative. Um, so I don't actually watch soaps, but there's so many people who are absolutely obsessed with them. Equally, people are obsessed with celebrity and celebrity families these days. Again, I've not really got much interest in this, but people get absolutely fascinated in the glossy magazines. And um, as I've said, I am a bit of a retrocentric, so my idea of a celebrity family is actually the Mitfords. Because if you've got the Mitfords and history, you do not need soaps and you do not need celebrity families because they're the original. So um, if you've never heard about them, they're very, very famous throughout the 20th century. And um, Muv and Fav were lovely fascists and um, brought up their children in amazing ways in which they changed um, the British aristocracy, really. So they were minor aristocracy, were slightly related to um, the Churchills, which is quite interesting. And um, Basically, they were some of the most desirable women of their generation. They were the Angelina Jolies. They had striking blue eyes. They were famous debutantes, and everybody wanted to marry them off. So um, they were just in the media, and everybody knew about them. And um, there were quite a lot of them. So there's six sisters and one brother, and they do all look the same. So I'm going to try and explain how they all differ ever so slightly. Um, but if you follow the thread, you'll see why we don't need um, soaps and everything when you've got the Mitfords. So we're going to start with Nancy. This is a lovely picture of Nancy by Cecil Beaton, one of the most famous photographers of the 20th century. Um, she was an author. She was also a Francophile, also a fascist. Hooray! And um, so, but she's really not the top of the pile. She's vaguely sane. So um, the next one that we have is Pamela, who was known as the rural Mitford. She tried to stay out of it all and just, you know, grew, grew things on her farm and just kept to herself, really. Um, the next one that was in line was um, the brother, then was the only boy. So um, that was Thomas. Um, at the outbreak of the Second World War, Thomas refused to fight the Nazis because he was a fascist. And um, so he was sent to Burma. Um, because he decided that fighting the Japanese would be absolutely fine instead, and uh, died there in 1945. Diana was meant to be the most beautiful of all the Mitfords, and she married into the uh, Guinness family, so she was doing quite well because she was one of the most desirable debutantes of her age. Instead of gallivanting around Europe with him, instead she decided to ditch him and marry Oswald, uh, yeah, Oswald Mosley, who was the head of the British Union of Fascists, which you cannot script this. It's just genius. So he was made of Mussolini and all sorts of other deplorable people in the turn um, mid 20th century. My favourite Mitford is Unity. Unity was allegedly the mother to Hitler's child. So she just tops the crazy of all the Mitfords. Um, she also um, tried to kill herself on the outbreak of the Second World War. Um, her middle name is actually Valkyrie, I am not making this up, and she was conceived in the town of Swastika in Canada, where her father had a gold prospect. I am not making this up. You do not need soaps when you've got the Mitfords. Next sister, Jessica, communist, obviously. So, um, as you can imagine, she didn't really get on with her sister Diana due to differing political opinions. And ironically, she emigrated to America. I can't figure that out. But anyway, so um, during their childhood, Unity and Jessica, or Decca, um, used to share a bedroom. Now, their mother never thought it weird that they drew a line down the middle of the bedroom, one side communist, one side Nazi. Didn't stop them, didn't think it weird. But anyway, um, Deborah, or Devo, um, was probably one of the most successful Mitfords in that she married into the Chatsworth family, as one does, and um, became um, a duchess, which um, she's only died very, very recently as well, in September. So she did okay for herself. So I've got a little rhyme for you to remember your Mitfords in order. So I've got to get this right as well. So you have author, farmer, early death for the brother. Then you have uh, fascist, Nazi, communist. And then you have, no, we have no Mitfords left because of the death of the Duchess. There you go. So yeah, as I was saying, um, the Duchess of Devonshire has died. Now it's her son Peregrine, not kidding you, who has taken over the family fortune and is leading the way with Chatsworth. And um, equally, she revolutionized the stately home in Britain. Um, so if you should ever meet a Mitford descendant, my main tip for you is do not mention the war. It's, it's just better left 
unsaid really because they caused a lot of a fracas and they're going to be recovering from it from decades to come. Um, so as I was saying, being a bit of a retrocentric, I would definitely take the Mitfords over the Kardashians any day and I definitely know who would win in a fight. <laughs> Thank you very much.